thank you very much. Uh, thanks everyone for attending this webinar. And uh, just in a couple of minutes, um, so I, I will give you a quick introduction about what we're going to speak about today. And then we will jump right uh, into our main topic, which is power line inspection workflow explained. So basically, um, why we decided to run this webinar is because uh, in the consulting and development department of SPH engineering, we are trying to build end-to-end uh, -end workflows for different uh, industries, for different problems. And we try to combine our products and products of our partners into some reasonable and useful uh, solutions and we help uh, our partners and clients to implement these workflows in their organizations. So uh, today's agenda, uh, we're going to speak about the end-to-end -end workflow for power line inspection and we will cover uh, a few major topics. Um, we actually will value your time and we uh, We'll try to be uh, clear and concise. So uh, we will cover flight planning for power line corridors uh, with the LIDAR, which is uh, uh, one of the uh, most popular uh, solutions for power, uh, power line corridor inspections. Uh, then we will discuss uh, the point cloud processing and the ways how you can generate different products from the point cloud data and uh, you know and generate different reports from the point cloud then we will briefly cover uh, how we can do visual inspections of poles and pylons uh, which is also an important an important uh, component of any power line and uh, yes, and finally, uh, we will present a simple yet powerful tool for uh, image annotation and report generation uh, for poles and pylons. So uh, the first topic is flight planning, and I'm going to run UGCS. I hope you can see UGCS software. Yes, exactly. Cool. And uh, I hope that most of you already uh, know uh, how UGCS works and uh, uh, main characteristics of the software. So it, like, it has 3D map, which helps you to plan missions in diverse elevation. Uh, and uh, it actually is, it's, it's very good for 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 building large scale missions. It's a desktop software, and uh, you can um, build, uh, you can uh, develop dozens of uh, flight plans on the same map, and uh, you know plan your day or week uh, of drone surveys ahead. So, but today I'm not going to speak too much on that topic. Uh, we have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel that you can explore. Also, we make webinars from time to time. Today, I want uh, to explain just some basics regarding the uh, flight planning for corridors and also cover a very important uh, topic of uh, sensor calibration um which is uh, like uh, which is very which significantly affects the quality of collected data and yeah you definitely should know about that so let's build a simple mission together and uh, we'll call it uh, lighter inspection then uh, we select a drone because one of the most popular drones on the market for various LiDAR sensors is uh, DJI Matrice 300. And recently they announced 350, but it's more or less the same vehicle. So I will use it as a reference uh, drone. 
and we configure some basic parameters of the flight plan and that's it so now assume that we have the power line along this road and uh, for that uh, we will use uh, a lighter corridor flight plan uh, this tool we introduced uh, more than a year ago. Um, it's very popular and useful. So mm -hmm. I will briefly explain the main parameters. So um, actually, there are two ways how you can create a LiDAR corridor. So the first one is you just click on the map. Click on the map. And uh, then uh, configure main parameters like corridor width, uh, like uh, altitude mode, like flight height. Also, you can configure various uh, data acquisitions uh, parameters, like the overlap that you want to get finally in your resulting data. Also, you can specify the field of view of the sensor field of view of the sensor and uh, if uh, a sensor is equipped with uh, a camera then uh, uh, you can also configure such things like uh, forward overlap which uh, will help you to uh, you know which will help uh, software to generate uh, appropriate number of uh, uh, steel shots which uh, later can be used to colorize the point cloud so yeah basically you have everything that you need to plan the flight uh, and uh, maybe one important uh, detail here is that uh, depending on the width of the and also yes please notice that uh, uh, the flight plan by default is generated on the constant altitude above the ground level because for uh, lighter missions it's very important to fly on more or less the same altitude to keep the point density uh, uniform along the entire data set yeah also please notice one important parameters parameter which um, <clears throat> uh, sometimes uh, missed uh, by our users so uh, by default say if you have the uh, corridor with say 30 meters and the flight height uh, 80 meters and the field of view 70 degrees which is a typical value for DJI L1 sensor for example uh, then uh, the software will calculate just one pass uh, which might not be sufficient in certain situations so if you want to you know to have a better overlap and make two passes then you can adjust the weeds of the corridor so for example you can specify 140 meters and in this case software will calculate for you automatically two passes <laughs> uh, so yeah keep it in mind and uh, <clears throat> also you can configure the field of view of the sensor uh, different sensors have different uh, field of views so you need to know the field of view of your specific sensor, and that will be the key for accurate and precise missions. Um, another uh, important thing about flight planning is that you need, typically you need to make <clears throat> a calibration of the LiDAR and depending on the sensor type you might need uh, different patterns so for uh, such sensors like uh, yellow scan or regal uh, or other sensors you typically will use uh, eight figure and uh, mm. you can add explicitly the uh, calibration pattern to your route typically you do calibration before the data acquisition begins and to do that we can add the first waypoint for example here and uh, actually it's a good practice to add the first waypoint near your takeoff location explicitly that 
is a safe approach. And then uh, after this first waypoint, uh, I can add the pattern figure. So here it is. Yeah. So this is how it looks like. So it's uh, an eight figure. You can adjust it slightly. So you can adjust rotation. You can adjust uh, altitude of this figure. Also, you can adjust length and width. Yes, and you can add as many figures as you need. Sometimes sensors are being calibrated after the flight also. So, for example, if you want to add uh, another, another calibration pattern after the flight, then uh, you can just click on that another figure. Uh, then uh, if you use uh, if you use uh, a different sensor, for example, DJI L1 or the sensor from Green Valley, which is very similar to L1, and Cody will speak about the sensor a bit later today. In this case, you might need a different calibration approach. And that's uh, this is something new in the software. So DJI L1, uh, initially, uh, they also recommended to do eight figure, but uh, um, after some period of time, they decided that DJI decided that it makes sense to go back and forth um, every 100 seconds. And in our latest version of uh, the uh, LiDAR tool, we implemented this IMU calibration. And because you have to perform it uh, very often, we uh, integrated this tool into the uh, LiDAR corridor. So right now, please notice these uh, blue segments. Uh, actually, these segments are added automatically to the flight plan. And these are the places where the drone will make this uh, calibration required for L1 and similar sensors. And uh, I want to show you how it looks like. I have a video recording. So here, here's the drone flying. And the drone is approaching this blue segment. So let's see what will happen you know, like in a few seconds. So the drone, uh, the drone touches the bottom and it flies to the end of this segment. Then it stops, returns back, and then proceeds again. Yes. So, and then if we will like uh, rewind a little bit to the name, next segment, then after a predefined period of time, the drone will repeat this calibration again. So, you don't need to make this calibration manually anymore. You can use this uh, automatic pattern, which should significantly simplify the overall data acquisition workflow and make it safer. Uh, you know, because you don't need to switch modes on the drone. So basically, uh, for <clears throat> corridor data acquisition, this is what you need to know. Uh, as I mentioned before, we uh, are going to uh, make a separate webinar uh, regarding different flight planning tools in UGCS. And also, you can find a lot of videos on our YouTube channel. So for now, uh, just to keep a good pace of this webinar, uh, this is the end of the first part. And uh, I want to give a word to Cody, and we will speak uh, about uh, point cloud data processing. So Cody, now it's your turn. I will stop sharing my screen. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, as Alexa had mentioned, my name is Craig Mahal. I'm the North American Operations Customer Success Manager for Green Valley International. I uh, thank you all for being here, for all of our attendees around the world. 
we're going to talk about our extremely powerful software, uh, Live Power Line. <clears throat> So yeah, so GVI is Aerial Power Line Solutions uh, alongside coupled with UGCS. It's an intelligent classification analysis and autonomous inspection software specifically dedicated to that of the power line industry. Uh, we have worked with several different companies around the world to master and perfect our software uh, specifically for that use case in the power line industry, making it much safer uh, and much more clear and visible for what your objective is when it comes to power line management. Uh, next slide. So just a brief overview. Uh, again, GVI Powerline Solutions. Uh, we'll go into the software, which is called Live Powerline. Some of our basic tools, so classification, vectorization, and a plethora of other. Uh, we will also give a brief demo of our vegetation encroachment. Uh, fine inspection, workflow, introduction, data examples, reports, uh, and then other various LiDAR-based outputs. Uh, we'll give a couple case studies and then a bit of market leadership. Hmm. So just brief GBI introduction. We are headquartered in Berkeley, California, a leading innovator of 3D mapping technologies. Uh, we're a turnkey solutions in the world of LiDAR. We offer hardware and software. Uh, we originated as a software company and then designed our hardware to work hand in hand with that software. Uh, we provide terrestrial and mobile aid, uh, terrestrial, mobile, and aerial uh, LiDAR systems, along with our software from a collection of base, a collection of both. Um, we have LiDAR 360, which is our overall powerhouse software. Uh, we have Light Powerline and LiDAR 360 NLS. Uh, we partner with some of the industry's most innovative companies, such as UGCS, uh, Regal, Hasai, DJI Livox, uh, and so on. Uh, and we strive to bring our customers the most effective products that will get the job done. As one of the top LiDAR manufacturers globally now, GVI LiDAR products have been used in at least 137 countries, including many Fortune Global 500 companies, Stanford, US, uh, sorry, Stanford University, and the US government. Next slide. Key question is, are your transmission towers and power lines being ins inspected as often as needed? Uh, almost anywhere in the world, you can step outside and see power lines, but how safe are those lines? Are they thoroughly checked often enough? Which is the key question. As the world's electrical needs increase, so does the number of power lines required to meet those needs. Uh, in uh, Australia alone, there are over 850,000 kilometers of distribution grid and 45,000 kilometers of transmission grid in operation currently in Australia, making it one of the largest interconnected electricity markets in the world. Just a couple brief uh, stories. Uh, in the US, we specifically see a lot of uh, danger related to fires. Uh, and then unfortunately, those fires are most of the time driven by uh, poor power line management. In California, over the past five, six years, we've seen hundreds of fires with the loss of lives uh, surpassing that of <clears throat> a couple hundred people uh, and including at this point in time, close to a trillion dollars in damage, uh, both property structure and uh, ecological damage. Some of that is not replaceable. Majority of that is absolutely not replaceable. So if we can tackle these uh, issues early on and make sure that we are doing it correctly, Potentially, we can save lives in the future, and a software like Powerline, uh, like Live, Live Powerline, coupled with UGCS, is the the ticket for that to happen. Next slide. So, what we're going to talk about just an intelligent aerial inspection of Powerline networks. <clears throat> Some of the basic tools again is our classification, our vectorization, vegetation encroachment, fine inspection and a plethora of other uh, LiDAR-based outputs. Uh, the main products that will be highlighted within this specific data set or in this webinar would be that of the LiAR X3 uh, and our LiAR 220. Um, both are unmanned and uh, LiEagle and LiHawk, which are either EVATOL, fixed wing, or helicopter-based. Processing would be within my power line. It's a power line point cloud vectorization and analysis software, as mentioned before and you will get to see it uh, in most of its glory.
Uh, so GBI's Powerline Solutions workflow, the aerial, it starts with your collection. Uh, so first and foremost, pre-planning that collection via UGCS, uh, setting up your, your trajectory, setting up your lines, getting the calibration flights in place, uh, and then leading to the high quality LiDAR data acquisition that you would see from that. From there, it goes into data post-processing, which would be live power line, specifically looking at inspections based on LiDAR data with real-time working condition analysis and simulates and predicts environmental variabilities. Uh, and it, it, from there, you would have customized flight route planning, uh, detailed transmission tower inspections, air patrol, and the use of a uh, RGB-based drone uh, to capture high-quality HD images so that you can get true inspection of your uh, power lines. Next slide. So next, we are going to briefly walk through some videos, uh, some demos that we have put together for you from uh, both current clients and also ones that were self-collected. And we're going to start with just uh, some classification and vectorization. Uh, so this is actually a live video from our uh, software being utilized. First and foremost, you're going to add the data to the to live power line. Sorry, right, it's a little not so clear. When you would select your coordinates in our software, it allows for uh, UTM uh, and also uh, US based, uh, so NAT 83. You'll be able to change the detection line voltage level so that it suits your current work job. The classification system is actually very detailed, so if you need to change things, you can add specific classification features. This makes it easy for on the go, or if you need to add a few extra features to this uh, feature, extra classification features. What we're reviewing here is <clears throat> the point cloud by itself without any classification done. Uh, this would be in intensity. This allows you to see uh, what the data set looked like, uh, just pure raw. And then from there, we saw elevation. And now this is an RGB. Again, back to elevation, this allows you to visually see the point cloud that is generated specifically about the power lines to see the difference in height. Uh, from here, we're going to select uh, towers. Giving IDs to every single tower. This makes future generated reports much easier to follow. Moving on to our real time condition. We're going to clip and classify the entire data set. This is all done by uh, learning algorithms that can develop over time. So we have AI deep learning and we have machine learning as well. The result from this will be a classified data set of both the power lines, transmission towers, um, all of the vegetation. So you'll see trees, everything will be collected specifically so that when you go to do further analysis, you will easily be able to visualize that data to make sure that when you go to running encroachments later on, you'll be able to see the uh, in-depth uh, vegetation encroachment. Uh, and then for further fine inspection, we will move on to that after this. The rate at which the software actually processes the data, so in terms of classification, is all driven by your computer's RAM. Um, so it's suggested to utilize at least eight, gigab eight gigabytes of RAM, a strong GPU. Uh, typically, I run a 64 gigabyte, which allows for extremely fast processing depending on the data set. LiDAR data itself isn't really that data intensive. It's when you add RGB to it that adds a bit of uh, data intensity. So your data sets get extremely large uh, <clears throat> in gigabytes when you add RGB to it. What we're viewing now was the automatic classification. This allows for you to visualize the power lines independently. Again, the vegetation as we saw it, 
and then the towers. And as you can see, the, the legend on the left-hand side allows you to see all of the, the features that have been classified, specifically labeled by their class. This is visualizing a hang insulator. You can see it's extremely easy to do one touch click. Uh, it is specifically select on a single point that is within that point cloud, and then it automatically adjusts to the rest of the point clouds. This allows for back fitting. <clears throat> As you can see, there's two different power lines within this data set, and it was able to classify separately. Here, this is a vegetation encroachment real-time condition report. Automatically generated, it pops up in the HTML. This shows the section, the number, your distance to the minor tower, physical position on earth, type, horizontal distance, vertical distance, clearance distance, distance to the ground, and the safety level. The key factor is the safety level. We want it to be that right off the bat, you see that it is a danger, uh, which needs to be assessed and managed uh, as soon as possible. Across the US, this is an extremely high uh, level of danger risks that we are seeing currently and uh, in the past, leading to, as I spoke of earlier, uh, fires that were just incredibly small. Uh, so, again, vegetation encroachment, scissor crossings, tree fall. All of these are done by predictive modeling as well. So, it can predict future events from occurring future growths. Uh, this is also very beneficial so that you don't have to go back uh, after you do a set of uh, management because you already know that the future potential of a risk in the general area is worth managing and taking care of again as soon as possible. Next. Again, simulation conditions. There's also simulation on strong wind, tree growth, high temperatures, ice coatings, and other simula simulation conditions with reports generated automatically. So we're gonna take a, uh, take a strong wind as an example as below. Strong wind analysis was zero to 15 meters per second, taking line type into account. <clears throat> and again, is indicating the safety level of danger. So if certain days the wind is higher or lower, it will detect whether or not uh, your power lines will be at risk. And that again is a reason for you to go out and manage and take care of them as soon as possible. Next. Moving on to our fine inspection workflow. This is autonomous and refined inspection of transmission towers by a UAV. Uh, based on high precision 3D laser point cloud data of the transmission line, Plan the refined inspection route of the UAV, realize fully autonomous inspection of the transmission line by the UAV, and improve the inspection quality and efficiency and to reduce the operation threshold. The template nesting technology is adopted to realize the batch and rapid generation of the same type of tower inspection routes. So as you can see, point cloud collection, usually done within UGCS and data processing, flight route planning, planned flight routes execution, image collecting, 
renamed an AI assisted detection of deficiency from resulting images. On the top, we can see that the UAV route was planned based on the point cloud that you collected. The photos are automatically archived and renamed so that they're suited to your current workflow and then a remote live streaming real time picture return. This is our brief demo of the final inspection of the flight planning. Again, all of this is based on your current trajectory that you had set with UGCS, flown with the sensor, collected the data, processed, and then input it into live power lines so that you can create the additional flight path that will be needed for the HD images for fine inspection. Similar to the stake earlier, you're going to flip the tower, choose a horizontal buffer, visualize to make sure that you're getting it correctly so that you don't uh, input your data incorrectly. Where you'll mark, mark your point. As you can see, you have several different types of phase insulators, uh, field lines, full strings, tower ends. All of these are automatically generated in our software so that it should suit the majority of all power line uh, grid systems. If not, we would be able to work with you with the potential of trying to add more features within our software to better suit your specific needs. Software is a, a bit difficult to learn at first, not extremely difficult, just a, a workflow that you that we will help you walk through. Once you have that, it is just several click button process that allows you to do large data sets in a very short amount of time. Automatically generate the images. Creating a horizontal buffer again. Leave room for manual editing, as you can see a real time visualization from the side point cross section. And the angle at which you're viewing your data. where you're setting your waypoints in order for the Phantom P4 or other RGB cameras to allow it to follow these specific trajectories in order to capture the best set of images so that your inspection is done correctly and as easy as possible. Set your opt opt obstacle avoidance distance. It'll indicate whether or not it's suited suitable. If it is not suitable, as you saw, it'll indicate with a red, uh, red message needing you to change parameters specifically fitted for that situation. This is where you're going to export the trajectory to the DJI Pilot app or similar uh, flight planning apps or smart controllers. KM, KML trajectory file and a JSON file are corrected, generated from this. As you can see, it looks like a chaotic mess, but it is very detailed specifically for you, again, to get the best collection from every single angle so that you make sure that you are not missing anything and that you don't have to go back out and refly at the same spot over and over to make sure that you're collecting what you need the first time around.
the entire point behind this is to make sure that you get the perfect angle first time around. This view is from the Phantom 4 <clears throat> as it takes its images and flies its route following the trajectory and waypoints that was created within my power line. Generated automatically as the DJI file or similar RGB files. We're going to detect recognition. Automatically rename the images based on the trajectory file for location data. Each of the images have a specific named file. This allows you to see as you angle them, both your face, your head, fields. Your point is to make it so that you do not have to go out a second time to redo your collection. You want to make sure that it's done first time around so that you're saving money, saving resources, and getting the management done as soon as possible. The AI assisted detection of deficiency from resulting images, as we can see on the right, severe frame is occurring from overtime uh, wear and tear. This is all being able to be detected within the software allowing you to, again, save time and resources to make sure that you focus those resources on what is just needed. Part of the fine inspection is also additional deliverables. You can get infrared temperature measurement reports. Uh, this allows you to know whether or not there is areas that are weak or also potential dangers by that of the transmission via infrared images. Uh, this one specifically was with the FLIR Thermocam. Uh, it's spelled in overheating insulators and conductors is an extremely critical part. This is actually what led to the campfire that occurred in California in 2019. Um, and this is something that, again, several companies have been trying extremely hard to focus on this issue to make sure that it's taken care of early on. Uh, and again, you can identify inefficiencies in conduction and prevent chances of blackouts as well. Um, saving your local system and your local city from any issues, uh, including overall power outages. Next. And then another findings, uh, fine inspection sample data, uh, UAV, UAV line inspection of a transmission power grid, detailed inspection for the tower, the image distance from the object is three meters. All of which is also visually represented within my power line. Next. The second data would be uh, a 500 kilovolt tower. Number two is in Berkeley. It's the middle part next to the tower. The number one insulator is a horizontal angle. This was taken in 2020. Main inspection targets were the pylons, the insulators, and the power line fittings. Several other features that we offer uh, within our software is the completion of acceptance, the tower coordinate positioning, tower structure inclination, uh, cross arm height differences, the guide ground wire sags, uh, jumper to tower distance, line rotation angle, jumper sag, call height measurement, conductor ground, wire spacing measurements, clearance distance measurements and analysis along with several different types of reports that are generated from this. So that management becomes extremely easy. Uh, you can send it to uh, your clients, you can send it to your power grid uh, management holders. And from there, you will be able to 
walkthrough processes with them uh, to make sure that the data that you had collected and the processing that you had done was for an efficient effort of reduction of resource use so that, again, everything is done with the focus of getting things done as soon as possible. So just a couple case studies. So within uh, State Grid Transmission Tower, so the State Grid Corporation of China is the third largest company in the world, according to the Fortune 500 companies list and largest utility company in the world. It was a pilot project. There were 28 base towers, including eight base of tensile towers and 20 base of linear towers in the areas to be scanned. Uh, in order to ensure the success of the project, Green Valley team launched the research of independent fine inspection technology in July 2019 and by investigating the current situation of independent fine inspection of the domestic power grid. According to the current situation of the power grid, the technical verification test was carried out in the training line of implementation unit in the hospital. And after continuous summary and debugging, the implementation plan and measures of the independent fine inspection project were formulated. Uh, we utilized the LIAR 220 device, which was collected to, which was used to collect the laser point cloud, uh, and the LIAR power line fine inspection module was used to plan the autonomous fine inspection route for small rotorcraft like the Phantom 4 uh, to execute this uh, project. As you can see, the data result was displayed, including all of the information generated from LIAR power line, as stated earlier. The 220N it was the system that was used. It was for a collection of 28 base towers, uh, and the work of 28 base towers was completed within one day. Fine inspection from now generated in light power line. So the workflow, plan flight routes based on the point clouds, according to the operation instructions for refined inspection of high voltage transmission lines in Inner Mongolia area inspection, Introduction planned flight route to the app for DJI Phantom 4 RTK or other aircraft to execute this and then fly automatically according to the route and take photos at fixed point with fixed suitable settings. Overall, a project summary and outlook, the autonomous inspection method based on LiDAR is suitable for most common tower types and is suitable for environments with rugged terrain and difficult for personnel to approach the tower while for special tower types and complex line forms, such as transportation tower, transposition towers, divergent towers, terminal towers, and et cetera, the go-around base scheme is more applicable, and the go-around base scheme is more conductive to discovering and solving the problem of shooting occlusion in real time. Therefore, the application of automatic inspection technology in Inner Mongolia power grid in the future should be a pattern in which the point cloud-based scheme and the go-around scheme complement each other, with the point cloud based automatic inspection technology as the mainstay, covering a large area of common lines and complex terrain, improving the inspection efficiency, supplemented by the automatic fine inspection technology, making up for the difficulty of route planning based on the point cloud method for the relatively rare small area special lines. So last but not least, market leadership. Within the market leadership, we're just referencing on our power line applications with LIDAR. We've worked with several different private companies, government clients, uh, some of the top 10 largest glo companies globally, 100 top 100 largest companies globally, private companies, top 100 largest companies globally in 2019, and then up to 10,000 kilometers that we did within 2019. Uh, we are just referencing what we have from up to 2019, just because of the fact that uh, from 2019 on, majority of the data that we have done is specifically confidential, so we don't actually release that yet. Um, but for example, our other solutions have served one single power line project of around 80,000 kilometers in 2022. Thank you everybody for joining and definitely uh, look out for us. <clears throat> we have several different features within our software. And again, if we if you run into something within our software that you think could be improved or added to specifically suit the needs of your power grid or your management system, let us know because we will do what we can and our software developers will work with you hand in hand to make sure that that gets uh, accomplished. Thank you again.
Thank you, Cody. So we have a lot of a lot of questions. Uh, your colleagues already started to answer them. Uh, yes, and thumbs up from uh, our visitors also. So, Alexei, would you like to share the screen now? Yes, I will do. Uh, please stop see. sharing. Yes, I'm trying. Yes, now I'm the sharing, screen is yours. I will share my screen again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, thank you, Cody. Actually, great presentation. And as I mentioned before, we are trying to you know, to assemble, to cover the complete workflow for people who are interested in this industry and power lines. So the last part of the presentation uh, before questions and answers is the new tool. Uh, simple but uh, yet uh, relatively powerful that you can use to process your imagery data so so uh, um, in many cases um, even if you don't have um, originally like a point cloud which you can use for uh, flight planning like it was demonstrated previously but you still can do um, data acquisition manually especially if you deal with small poles or even with big pylons but <clears throat> uh, uh, you, you you might need to acquire data <clears throat> and you will fly manually but the question is what to do with this data so typically you have a list like maybe dozens or hundreds of images from of uh, power poles and pylons from different point of views and uh, in many cases, at least what we see right now, people generate um, Word or PDF documents. And um, again, in many cases, uh, they just uh, struggle with Microsoft Word or similar tools. They paste pictures into the document and they add annotations and some text descriptions. So with image inspector tool, you can streamline this part of the workflow. So if you have a gallery uh, of images and you need to make annotations and then uh, generate a PDF report, you can use this tool. So for example, in this specific uh, uh, case, uh, I collected images from like different uh, inspections and <clears throat> Uh, you see that uh, very different types of problems uh, are visible on the high resolution imagery. So the typical workflow is to add uh, annotations to these problems. So uh, what you can do in the software is you can highlight the area with problem, you can specify the severity level. Also, you can <clears throat> add some problem problem definition also you can specify uh, you can specify the tag for uh, faster search and filtering and this is what you can do uh, for different issues actually woodpecker is also an issue for wooden poles uh, <clears throat> so you can annotate everything you see on your image uh then you can quickly filter and validate so for example if you uh, you can quickly filter images which has annotation or for example or doesn't have annotation you can see images which have annotations just 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 to check that you covered uh, all the data that you've been collected also uh we can deal with tags so all the tags that you apply to your annotations they are they become available in the filter so for example we can find pictures where we identified uh, woodpecker uh, woodpeckers which drilled wooden towers yeah and uh, you can process easily a large amounts of imagery also as a final result, what you can do, you can uh, you can <clears throat> export uh, your annotations into a nice looking report in either PDF 
на PDF. Yep, like this. So you can customize the logo of the report, you can add the title, and also all your annotations with your comments, they are exported to the file. Yeah, like this. And the same you can do for Microsoft Word. Because sometimes you might want to edit or add something on top of the default report generated by the tool. So yeah, this is why we added support for uh, Microsoft Word. Yeah, uh, pretty simple tool, lightweight, but it can save a lot of time if you deal with uh, imagery and specifically for uh, polls and violence. Now, um, the like the final world and word and then we will answer questions and answers. So just to summarize, so uh, you can uh, approach us if you want to set up a power line inspection program in your company. Uh, we covered a lot of experience we, I mean, SPH and also our partners covered a lot of experience uh, and uh, tools which can be used and deployed, uh, which can significantly speed up the uh, data acquisition and data processing. So also we can recommend how to properly uh, organize your work, how many people you need actually, how, what type of software and hardware you need for your specific task. Uh, how to organize data storage and uh, data processing workflow for a big team. Not like if you are just the only person who makes everything uh, flying and data processing, but if you have a team, um, you might have a lot of questions how to deal with all this data. So feel free to contact us and we will be happy, happy to to tell you what we know already and share our experience so yeah uh, basically this is it uh, we're almost out of time so let's uh, briefly walk through the questions so uh Cody, please i mute you unmute your microphone uh there are several questions regarding uh ladder 360 and uh, power lines so, and the first question, what is the difference between version 4.1 and 4.2? But maybe you also can mention that uh, recently you released version 6. So, if you could briefly explain what are the main advantages of the latest version and what is the difference comparing to previous ones, that would be great. Yeah, so we definitely um, have come a long way from version 4.1, 4.2. Um, as mentioned by David, fine detail inspection, electrical components, and defects detection. Uh, and we are working on the AI assisted inspection. Uh, collectively, LIDAR 360, each time we do version updates, uh, it is focused as a general whole. So a lot of the times it's fixing any type of bugs, just doing patch updates, adding features here and there. Uh, we added 3D modeling. Um, in the past, from version four, we have uh, true vector editing. Um, uh, the list is actually extremely large uh, from version four to version six. It can actually be found within our user guide, uh, which you can find on our website uh, that allows you to see all of the updates that we have done within version six uh, from version four, uh, which again is, is actually quite a lot. Okay, okay, thank you. There was a, another question. When you're planning an inspection, do you create a DSM? If yes, what's the resolution of DSM? Uh, so I can I can answer from the flight planning uh, point of view. So for for uh, the DSM, uh, you can have like uh, even five or ten meters resolution. In my opinion, that should be enough. 
especially if you know the approximate parameters of the power line and the surrounding vegetation. So you could add additional you know, flight head height uh, relative to the digital surface model. So yeah, I hope that's 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 the answer. And um, actually, it's not that easy to get, uh, especially if you have to collect data for a large area for the first time. Um, of course, you can try to acquire data from some commercial DSM providers like satellite data. Uh, but in many cases, you just it, it's hard to get uh, this accurate data, especially with uh, uh, up to date vegetation information. So um, maybe it makes sense uh, just to collect data on a high altitude and then use this data during uh, your uh, further <laughs> missions. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 what I can say on that topic. Uh, also, there was a question about the support for distribution and transmission uh, power lines in um, LiDAR 360. Could you, could you please comment on that? Um, uh, because uh, people ask if the previously transmission lines were supported, what about distribution? So any comments on that? Uh, I don't see that. Sure. Maybe maybe someone answered in parallel, but I think uh, that's an important topic, and uh, it it was raised several times during your during your uh, presentation. Okay, uh, can you sorry say the question again? Right, that's what I was missing. Was I can. Alexei, can you read the question once more, please? The question was about the level of support for transmission and distribution power lines in like power lines. So yes, it should work with both distribution. Uh, sorry, uh, distribution uh, power lines. Sorry, I need to find the question because I'm still. Uh, yeah, so it actually within my power line, it will work with all distribution lines. Okay. Um, also, uh, so this one is answered. Uh, uh, there again, there was a question. Maybe it's answered. Uh, it was answered in chat, but. Um, I will ask you, uh, you demonstrated a slide uh, where the conductor, the transmission wire is clearly visible on the picture. So uh, when you uh, collect, uh, when you use, when we use uh, like power lines to uh, collect images, is there any way to um, collect images not uh, not images of the structure, but the wires also. There would be, you would just set the waypoints based on the area of the power line that you're looking for directly. So instead of the surrounding it, the waypoints would be more in a parallel pattern along the power line. Okay. I think we answered most of the questions 